the Lord, I would like to welcome you all to another Youth Sunday here at the Mother Church of God. Those who are in the house and those who are streaming online through Facebook or YouTube, I pray that you will be richly blessed today. Search me, O God. Thank you. 
invite you now to consecrate your heart to the Lord in prayer. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So I want to leave this scripture with you guys today. Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2. Wherefore, see also, see we are also, and we are compassed about with such great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy was set before him endured the cross. The joy was set before him. So the pain that Jesus suffered for us on the cross, he knew that there was something ahead. There was something ahead. There was something ahead. A true reward. So we must remember and we must know that our true reward lies beyond this world. So even though things aren't how it should be right now, we should have that goal in mind, that true reward, the joy that is ahead. We must remember that in mind. Whatever we are going through, remember that joy that is ahead. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Strength like no
Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Shaboya. So we're going to read from the Word of God this morning as we remain standing. And our scripture comes to us from Psalm 81. Psalm 81 has 16 verses. And I'm going to read as you all will follow in your Bibles. I'm inviting everyone to stand, children, adults, in reverence to the reading of God's word this morning. Bless the Lord, when he found it, please say amen. amen. Psalm 81. And he reads thus. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm. And bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp of the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, on our solemn feast day. For this was a statue for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained by this he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. All oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should not should have endured forever. Sixteen and last, he should have fed them also with the fineness of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Bless the name of the Lord. You honor that word by saying, Glory be to God. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's not ever shall be. Word without end. Amen. Bless the Lord. You may take your seat. So the scripture today is what is speaking was speaking to the children of Israel. You know that they, they turned their faces and their hearts from him. And all God wanted to do was to bless them and make a way for them and to provide for them. But they turned with them, themselves from him. So this morning I want to encourage you all to hearken unto the voice. When you hear God speaking to you in a still voice, turn not your heads away, harden not your hearts. But listen to the voice of God because he's coming again to take his children home. And you don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind. So I'm going to live my life pure and holy and walk in his footsteps. I'm not telling you that it's easy. And as young people, it's not easy to, to, to be a Christian in this world, in this time right now. But if you have faith and if you trust in him and, and, and pray to him, he will guide you and he will direct your path. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So I'm going to invite you all to stand in with me and turn to our hymn, hymn 666. Hymn 666. When, sorry, hymn number 413. When peace like a river. And this morning, no matter what the circumstances are, just know that it is well with your souls. It will be well. It shall be well. In Jesus' name. Stand in the church and turn to your hymnals. 413. 
Let's do me one, two, three. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows I see, when
Carl would with us, can I ask her to stand? Oh, she has a baby. Yes, just wave your hand and we give God thanks for you. Praise God. But Amelia Smith, bless the Lord. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Alicia Patam, not sure I pronounce it right. God bless you, yes. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Are you related to Miss Watson? Okay, great. Amen. And we also have Shannon, Shannon Palmer with us today. Bless the Lord with another baby. Amen. And we thank God for all of you as you have come. And we pray that, you know, you continue to come. And as you bring the babies today and you dedicate them to the Lord, the babies must keep on coming. And they can't come on their own. So we expect to see you as you bring your children each week to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We also want to acknowledge our regular uh, sisters who continue to come. Amen. Sasha Vassal here at the front. Yes. And she's prepared for great things, you know. So I believe in God that she will just surrender all to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Also, Miss Bennett at the back. Amen. Um, Pastor French, you have to include Sister Bennett into the meetings as you, you know, prepare them for baptism because she says that, you know, she's starting this year with Jesus. Bless the Lord. I will hold you to your commitment, Sister Bennett. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I want to also acknowledge Simone again and Colleen and me and, and also Shanice. We want to continue to pray that you will make a full surrender to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's always good to see you in the house of the Lord, but it's even better to know that you are a part of the family of God. Amen. Praise God. Also, Sister Marsha, who will be preparing for right and our fellowship. So we bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So God is doing a marvelous thing here in British Town. Do you see it? Hallelujah. And we just continue to lift him up and give him praise because indeed he is doing all things well. Amen. By way of prayer request, I keep Samuel's and family asking for prayer. And so we want to remember Akeem and the family in prayer today. Also, next week, Sunday, will be our African Sunday. African Sunday, next week, as we celebrate Black History Month. So, everyone, get out your African wear, your African attire, and come to lift up the name of Jesus together and have a great time. Amen, amen. In our meeting, I made note that we may have the white sea with us, the Jamaica Group for Christ. Um, still not confirmed, but you'll hear more about that as the week progress. This afternoon at 5, there will be the launch service for the 75th anniversary. I've sent it in the WhatsApp group so that you can join the service. Those who would like to go in person, see me after church, because they're expecting persons from other church to be there. I serve as the committee chair and will be bringing greetings and it will be nice to have some of you with me. Amen? If you can make it. So this evening at 5 p.m., tune in and enjoy the presence of the Lord with the team from the Jamaica Youth for Christ. Amen. Right across Jamaica. I want to also announce that our convention comes up very, very soon. That's the first Sunday in March, March the 6th. And we'll be having a service here. And thereafter, the remaining services will be at the branch churches. We will still have our church door open. We will still be having service here for those who are not able to go to the different locations. And we will be streaming only from the convention services and ordination on the fourth service, on the fourth Sunday. So for the sixth we'll be here, on the 13th we'll be in Hall's Delight, on the 20th we'll be in Goshen, and on the 27th for ordination, we will also meet in Goshen again. Praise the Lord. I'm seeking one volunteer, an adult, to serve as a member of the panel for the panel discussion. Reverend Williams will be, John Williams will be the host, and we certainly want headquarters to be represented in that segment. This will be on the third Sunday in Goshen. So the person who volunteers 
volunteer, you have to prepare to go to motion. That day, after the morning service, we will be having break, and then we have the other segment. So the panel discussion will start by the latest 3 p.m., and we want to be represented. For the debate competition, we already have our representatives from headquarters, being um, Sister Shavoya and uh, Sister Russian Williams. And we are seeking two representatives from each branch, and each team will be made up from a member of each of the branches. Amen? So any, any team win, it means all churches win. Amen? Bless the Lord, and this will really foster unity among our young people and integration, and we want to pray that all will go well. We will be having two coaches, Sister Beulah and Sister Debbie Clark from Ocean, and Sister Beulah from Hotselite, and Reverend French is the host, praise God. And so we look forward to a great time. The winning team will be getting an award and also an award for the best speaker. So, Model Church headquarters, I want to shout up a tool as well as I want to see our branch churches, Ocean and Aussie Light, everyone shining and our young people on fire that day on the second Sunday at Aussie Light. Praise God. So please bear that in mind and make your pledge to support as best as you can so that we can have a great time in our month of convention and ordination. Bless the Lord. We had spoken last Sunday about our contribution towards the expenses of the convention. Already persons have been submitting their tokens. Please add them in as quickly as you can and we know that as usual, the Lord will richly bless you. Amen. For this week, tomorrow in the day, fasting in the church at 10 a.m., please come on out and enjoy you know, the presence of the Lord and seek His face, and indeed He will respond. On Thursday night, we'll gather again in the sanctuary and online for our Bible study. Last week, we had a small number, but indeed, we certainly had a great time. So, please come on out this Thursday. Those especially in the community, those especially who do not have online access, we don't want you to miss out on studying the Word of God. So please be here on Thursday night as we continue with our study. Those are the main announcements. If there are any other, you'll hear them as the week progress. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, it is your time. Jesus loves the little children.
I pray, God, as we walk up and give our offering, Lord, this is you unto you. So, Lord, I pray that you'll take from control and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone on this side, you're going to come up with the offering and give it to Sister Alma. And I'm going over this side, you're going to come up and give the offering to Sister Juliet. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord loves the cheerful givers to come with a praise this morning. Hallelujah. And I sing. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is no Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Fill my cup. 
Because I want to be able to do it. It's an experience. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. In 2019, 2020, I had to sit out an academic year. And, you know, mentally I was not focused to be honest. In my first year, I was not focused. Me coming out, for those who don't know, I'm currently a part of the faculty of law at the University of the West Indies. And me, the thought of law in a kid, that's why I'm writing a little solitary law. Still law, me, I do not come up from the law, and it's not anything new that I'll be doing. Financially, I could not afford it. Little did I know God was preparing me or uprooting me to place me more fertile soil that particular year that I had to sit out the year. Bless the Lord. Stay with your brethren. Stay with me. Bless the Lord. So when God wants to plant you elsewhere, particularly in more fertile soil, He has to uproot you from that place of comfort and familiarity and the uprooting process is usually the most painful part because the uprooting represents you moving away from where you are comfortable the uprooting represents you stepping away from that place where you know you're familiar with that place bless the lord bless the lord and there's something that i always say especially at work there is never growth where you are comfortable you will never grow when you are comfortable. Some things you have to be uncomfortable in the process to grow because that is what shapes you into who God wants you to be. Even at work, at school, not going to come easy. So you have to be uncomfortable in some situations to grow. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. As an agriculture student in high school, there's a process called germination. And this is where you plant a seed and the seed will spring its roots to produce whatever plant that was planted. Germination does not take place in soil that is not fertile, you know, necessarily cool shade or without water. It has to be moisture. So there are certain things that is needed for one to, you know, spring fruit, bear fruit or for the plant to grow. For for the seed to spring roots and the soil is very important. Now the soil represents in this case your environment. So if the soil is not fertile, you won't grow. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. If a seed is planted, when you plant that seed and the seed doesn't grow or it doesn't spring any roots, do you blame the seed? Ella, help me out, because you know, you're, you're, you have a green thumb. When the seed doesn't spring roots, do you blame the soil or you blame the seed? Do you check the soil rather? Or you check the seed? Which one do you check? Check the soil first. All right, I check the soil first. You know, a green thumb, man, and the plant, plant, and anything that man touch it for right now. Bless the Lord. I remember when my grandma was living in Kingston, she always brought up Kia. Kia, guys. Sugar, what is the name? What do people name when they sugar? No more. Bernard, that. Bernard, that's not looking for my grandmother. Because she had planted her kid them all the time. Anyway, she goes, she had planted her kid. And when she would plant the kid, she always, she always have a problem with ants that eat up the kid. And she would say, Mom, I can't go them ants here, you know. But one thing you will always notice, she always move the cane from where it was. Because if she leave it there, the ants are going to eat up the, the, the cane and the cane never grow. So she always move the cane from that particular spot, move it away from the ants, and then you see the cane spring up. So I said this to say, sometimes your environment is not right for you to grow. And God wants to move you from that place. And sometimes some things are happening, you know. And I said, why? Why do not grow? Why? Why do I have to live from unto mount? Why? Why do I can't get the good grace? Why? Why do I can't get a promotion? The environment sometimes it kills you inside and you don't get for growth. So when God wants to uproot you, know, don't be afraid of the process. Because it's really for your benefit. Bless the Lord. 
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You follow me so far, brother? Bless the Lord. Great. So, a lot of the times we think that, also, a lot of the times we think that we are done with some things. And, you know, so we're go back this, so we're not going this again. But we find ourselves falling into the same patterns over and over. The uprooting process was not completed. When you plant something and there was a, let's say, there was, let's say they put on the mango tree outside, but they leave the root inside. Eventually that tree will grow back, you know, because the root is still there and the root is still alive. So a lot of the times, God has to root with out of some things. You must ship up some people out of our life. You must ship up some things out of our life. If we have to lose some things, we have to lose it because God doesn't want us to fall back into that pattern, into that same thing. Oh, so what we're done with that. Bless the Lord. Who can relate? Or me can relate, you know. Me can relate. And of them say, you know what I'm saying? You see the other person, you know what I'm talking? Nah, I'm just going to go all your mouth. And so when the time comes, me can not hold my mouth. And when the time they say, hey, me wants to be to Z. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So that I'm going to uproot out of me, you know, Bertrand. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That is something that has been uprooted from high school. It is still in work in progress. Bless the Lord. But it is important, it is so important to pay attention to these little things, your environment, that, that process. When, when you find yourself going through certain things, it is really for your own benefit. So going back to my university experience now, I sat out here and during that year, I felt so, what would I say, I felt so behind. Because I was saying, why? So much, that took me three years, that took me longer than three years. And you know, my peers will graduate before me. They will graduate me, I was still there, I'm not going to go over the degree. My age is not an easy degree, but we move. And I felt so behind. When 2020 hit, you know, the pandemic and all, we were basically forced to be at home and to face ourselves and whoever we have at home. And 2020 was such a year of growth for me. I did not have school to focus on within that time. And the September of that year, because the upcoming academic year will have been 2020-2021, I started school again and I am not first year, I am not focus on that. I am not going to get a lot of faculty. That's all. I may have to get to work, but I am going to put in to be a part of the law faculty. Bless the Lord. In 2020, 2021, I really walked down and said, no, I'm going to tell you. I have to do it a little bit. I have to walk along and focus. I have to go do something different. And I remember when I was doing my, my first set of exams, I had an issue with student loan. I don't know if I call it student in here, I don't know if I take loan from student loan, but everybody knows a student loan, I probably know that thing is like, when you go very slow, it's an old lady and a very tall thing. So, there was an issue with student loan. They had all of my documents, they had everything, but they did not send over the forms to you. To give a little bit more information, a little bit more backstory, I had entered a pageant, the Miss Law pageant, and I ended up winning the pageant. So the Miss Law is basically a representative for the faculty, so the faculty mascot basically. And I caught, I realized that the exams are online, the exams started at 10 o'clock. By this time it was 10.30, I still could not see the container for the exam. And I said, I'm afraid to know myself, what am I going to do? I ended up calling, um, I called the faculty and I said to the lady, um, you know, I sent over all my documents and all of that, but they're still not giving me, they still didn't send over the phones and they're still not giving me clearance for my exam. 
So the lady asked me my name and all of that. And she said, hold on, this is the Miss Vaughn. I said, yes. So after that, she basically, she was calling back and forth, calling back and forth. Mind you, once again, if any college student in here, show I can tell you, eh? You, eh? You're just a number. Let's just put it like that. You're just a number. Just your ID number to you. And when the, when the lady was calling back and forth, back and forth, I was like, wow. Like, wow. This is actually shocking because I mean, you know, if you can't do it, you just can't do it. Simply put, you can't do the exam, you can't do the exam. Not, not, that I'm not to read them, essentially. And the lady, she called me and she said, come back, say that you let them send that email to so and so. She told me the person's name or the person's email. When I was calling, when I called to that you know, you know, the exam started already, you know, half an hour into the exam. When them called the lady, you know, when I passed in that loan, 19 persons waiting on the, you know, the phone queue. And for me, get a, for them me get a representative, rather. 19 persons, I remember the exam started already. I'm a half an hour into the exam. The, I ended up selecting some random selections and I got through to somebody and they, they sent me over to the right department. The email was sent. So I called back the lady and I said, hey, listen, they sent over the email and all of that. She said, all right, no problem. I'm going to call the man. So this is the person who gives you clearance on the exam. You know. I'm going to call the man and tell him, say, well, look out for the email because the email was sent and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again, remember, you will, if you can't do the exam, you just can't do the exam. Will you follow it? Will you follow it? Yeah. All right, Mr. Lloyd. So I said, you know, myself, no, I said, God, I must you said that you here because once you call and say, why you don't do have um, clearance for the exam? And I said, well, you need to check with student loan and they say, don't. So I ended up getting to do that exam and coming to the exam and all that. And I just sat there and I thought about everything. I was like, why? God, I feel like I'm sitting over here for a reason. Like, there was so much that my focus needed to be shifted at that point when I sat out a year. And there are a lot of other things, a lot of little things that happened after I came back to the faculty. And I said, God, this was my routine. So now you have, you have moved me from one place and you're shifting me to another place. And this place where you're shifting me is just favor. Favor upon top of favor upon top of favor. Mind you, when I got clearance for that exam, the lady said to me, I'm only getting clearance for one exam. I had an exam the following day, but I was seeing all the exam containers. She said I was getting clearance for one, but I saw all of the containers. And when I saw it, I was like, all right, maybe they're not getting clearance. I just see everything, but tomorrow it disappeared. For the following, the following week, because my exams were back to back, like a day, a day or two apart. For the following week, the exam containers were there for the entire week. And mind you, I kept checking my status with the student or the presidential portal that we can check. I kept checking my status and it was at C, but it was supposed to be at D, as in the, or E. And it was at a C status and I sat all my exams during that week. Every single one of them at a status C. Now, remember I know, the same uprooting that I'm talking about in every day. When I was being uprooted, still look how uprooted I want. I was so discouraged. I really felt like giving up on my degree. And when I came back, Honestly, everything has been going so smoothly since I came back because my focus has been shifted. There are a lot of things that I needed to leave behind, a lot of things that I needed to drop before coming back into the fraternity, coming back into my academics, coming back even into my animal walk with Christ. There are a lot of things that I needed to shift up and a lot of things that I needed to move up out of my life. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So even though the uprooting oftentimes comes with uncertainty, 
of where to go next. We can rely on the promises of God. Because there's something that, there's a scripture that I always, even up to this day, a scripture that I always rely on when I'm feeling discouraged. And that's Jeremiah 29, for verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. And plans to give you hope and a future. Bless the water promise, brethren. Water promise. Imagine you're going through and don't to worry yourself. This is just your uprooting process. But just need to move you from that place here. But just need to shift, shift your focus a little, a little bit more. But just need to get, you just need to get rid of some of them people here. Some of them company here. Your environment needs to change just a little bit. But don't worry, it's not to hurt you. It is to prosper you. And it's to give you hope and a future. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And we can even look at the prophets in the Bible. And Abraham, David, Daniel, their life can be used as an example, as trusting in God when we're going through this uprooting process. Because mind you, know, it's not easy, you know. It's not easy at all. Because when you don't know what to do next, you don't know which way to turn, it is not an easy process. You don't know how things are going to work out, it is not easy to press forward. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So, like I said earlier, not a long preacher, well, not a preacher. So I'm going to be very brief. Not a long speaker. <laughs> so I'm going to be very brief. But I just want you guys to keep this in mind. That whatever it is that you might be going through, or whatever it is, whatever trials, or whatever it is that you might be facing right now, you might be going through your uprooting process for God to place you in more fertile soil. And you see the funny thing about it, you know, a lot of the times you don't want to let go of some things and we don't realize that we're preventing ourselves from elevating or preventing ourselves from moving forward because we hold on to some mediocre things, some mediocre peer, some mediocre love, some mediocre treatment what God wants to give us so much more. So, so much more. Sometimes we have to let go and allow God to just uproot us and place us where He wants to place us. Because you see which part God has planted you? You have to blossom. It is not a question. It is not any answer. You have to blossom anywhere God plants you. And why? Once again, I tell you, it is not easy because a lot of the times we are only human and we get discouraged a lot of the times. But trust in God. Trust in God. Don't be fearful of the process. Trust in Him. And just rest, rely on His promises. Rely on that. If you don't know, no, I'm not going to turn on that. Remember Jeremiah 29 11. And for I know the plans. God knows the plans He has for us. We don't know the plan them, but He knows the plan them. And He's never ever planned to hurt us or harm us. Because the time that I had to sit out a year, that was the time that I needed to shift my focus and the time that I needed to grow as a person. Because since then, I think there's always something to work on, always improvements that needs to be made. But since then, I think that my character has developed so much. I've become involved in so much more things that I'm not a team where I'm a network, you know. You just get your degree and books, you become the next Peter Champagne or the next Tom Tavares. It's a, it's a degree or it's a, a, a fraternity that you really have to have a chat with, like a network. And that networking team would be in the first year of free with other people. Like, but no, I don't know how I don't know how make friends because I wouldn't want to you know, the IT type of people in a different fraternity. But I develop, my character has developed so much. And I am so grateful for that, that, that time that God had to move me away from all of the noise and all of the distraction. Because I saw it, the noise and the distraction and all of that, I saw it never ready yet. I saw it never ready for me grow yet. So my roots that need permanent, my roots that no, no, and the time for me blossom into what God wants me to be. And it's also time for, it, for us, some of us to move away. We need to move away from the noise and environment that will distract us. Certain people, you know, the naysayers or the ideas or the talk, and I say, oh, this and that, oh, you're going to do this, oh, this and the work and all of that. We need to move away from all of that and just focus on Jesus, focus right ahead and make, make God just plant you where you want to plant you, 
um, to the last song. So one thing that I want to leave with you this morning, brethren, check your soil. Check your soil. And remember, the soil represents your environment, the people who are around you, the people who you would go to for, for advice. You need to check your soil. Is your soil fertile this morning, brethren? We need to check if our soil is fertile. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So, going back to the very first thing that I mentioned. When God wants to place you somewhere, or wants to put you somewhere in fertile soil for you to blossom and for you to grow, it must uproot you. And the uprooting there, it's not going to be easy. It is never going to be easy. I just want you to rely on the promises of God. Bless the Lord. And always remember to check your soil. These are my few words. Bless the Lord. From the prayer and worship to the offering to the message to the word that God has given us, and truly His words are in line this morning. They are aligned because when I mentioned to you that you're full of the comfort zone, but what I cheer, what the pressure you're in, move out of that pressure and wash the body and wash the face, and just give God the praise and see the word of God is in us this morning. So sometimes you have a first of all, you have to be uncomfortable. We've got two complete things. As we move up, of course, step out of our zone and step into the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So we thank our sister, Sister Tajay, this morning for blessing our hearts to what God has told her to listen unto us. And I pray that you have been listening and not just to the listener, but keeping your heart and doing to live by the word of God this morning. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I see um baby did the baby are you baby to be blessed this morning? No? Okay. Bless the name of Jesus. So I'm gonna invite the Sunday school children, they want to come and sing for us this morning. They're something they have learned. So they are all sad when invited to come inside and they can sing.
that you will lead them, Lord God, where they need you most. Pray for the change in their lives. Pray for the shackle, every limitation, every setback in the name of Jesus. Bless your people today. Those who did not come, but they too have their challenges. I pray, God, that you will speak to them. Speak to their hearts. Speak to their circumstances. God, even though I speak, oh God, a word of a brother, French line, as you have shown me, Lord God, that man. I pray that I speak a word of my brother, French line. I speak good health right now. I speak healing over that man's life in the name of Jesus. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. I declare that by his strength, you are healed.